Welcome to Pigskins and Pageantry, a podcast dedicated to all things SEC football. My name is Wes, and I'd like to invite you to join me, Jesse, and Matt each week as we discuss last week's games, news from around the league, the big games this weekend, and more. And what's up, everybody? It's Wes. Welcome to this national championship edition of Pigskins and Pageantry. And uh, some of us are happier than others right now uh, as to uh, the events that just transpired last night. And uh, joining me, as always, uh, is a very happy Bama fan right now. What's going on, Jesse? I may be tired. I may have stayed up past my bedtime, but it was all worth it. And I must say that good truly triumphed over evil. Roll time. Evil. Wow. Okay. I mean, I think we all disparaged Ohio State pretty well throughout the course of our episodes, but I'm not sure oh, if the I word... think Alabama disparaged them pretty well yeah. last night. Well, that's true. <laughs> not sure if the word evil came up, though, but I, I like it. Uh, Matt, what's going on? Guys, I do not want to live on a planet that has 18 Alabama national championships. I just don't want to. I don't want to. I'm sorry, I don't. You know they're uh, they're taking volunteers for that uh, Mars trip. Um, if you want to go, there's no I, 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 the volunteers. I see what you did there. Let's go. <laughs> there's Awful. all I'm saying Just is hey, Awful. all I'm saying is there's no Bama championships on Mars yet. So not yet. That's a solid point. <laughs> yes. That's a solid point. Yeah, yeah. Give saving two years. He'll put a program up there. <laughs> the the uh, the Martian uh, program. Gosh. Um, the intergalactic program. I love it. Who's winning? How are they going to do that playoff? That's my question. It's like Space Jam, but with football. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you guys watch Interstellar? How they played, uh, what was that? Uh, Not croquet, um, uh, cricket or whatever it was. I don't know. That was, uh, you guys have to watch it. You haven't seen it. You have to watch it. Okay. We're already off the rails. Anyway. um, All right. Let's go ahead and get to the national uh, championship game. Always remember. If you ain't first, you're last. All right. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. What? Time out. What? Time what? Out. what? I need Wes as the person in charge of the show. Yeah. I need you to tell Jesse to stop looking so dadgum smug. I mean, it's it's it's. I can tell her. The screen right now doesn't mean it's going to happen. Work. <laughs> well, you, at least tell her. Yeah, you know, I, you know, whatever. All in right. Victory. Number three, Ohio State at a at seven and zero. Oh. Uh, formerly 7-0 versus Alabama 12-0, uh, the uh, CFP National Championship from uh, Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens, Florida. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just kind of like to go through it here. I mean, Bama just, um, I mean, it was it was touch and go there for a little while in, in the first half. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, they just really got out to uh, to a commanding lead before the first half was even over, uh, 35 to 17 at the uh, close of the half, um, and then ultimately winning this one uh, 52 to 24, which, as you recall, was the exact score that they beat uh, A&M by, and the committee said they didn't want another blowout. So here we are. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, so Matt got the point in this one. We'll talk about that at the end of this. Uh, he's, a, he's a happy yeah, man. Maybe. Um, and, uh, you know what? I don't want to steal any thunder because I feel like Jesse probably has this whole game memorized. She's probably watched it again, like three times today. So I wish I had Tivo. What, what you got, Jesse? What are you, what are you feeling right now? So many happy emotions, all of the happy emotions. Um, I mean, with all joking aside, I think it was an amazing game to watch. I think you, I think in the first half, everyone was like, wow, we really are seeing the two best teams in the nation. And that quickly went downhill for Ohio State. Um, It was, like you said, touch and go a little bit. We got tied. It was, you know, 7-7. And then it was, you know, like 14-10. And then it, you know, then it quickly went very uh, differently. But it was amazing, amazing to watch. Stop that. I can't help it. You've got to stop that. I I can't help it. I'm trying so hard. Um, but at one point, like there was, our defense was actually doing what a defense was supposed to do. And I think that was where we were all kind of nervous. You know, there were times during the season where Alabama's defense was a little bit questionable, mainly in that old Miss game. And there were still points where we've all talked about, it's not the Alabama defense that we've seen in years past and going up against 
an offense that looked like it did against Clemson, a little bit nervous, but then they started getting pressure on fields. I mean, fields was in what is his last game before heading to the NFL passed for 194 yards and a touchdown. Um, that's not the typical performance you saw from him. And people are going to argue and they're going to say, you know, he was hurt against Clemson. It's not him at 100%, la, 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 whatever. I was really proud of our defense for getting pressure, holding when they were supposed to hold. Um, super proud of our offense for capitalizing at almost every opportunity. Now, when Mac Jones fumbled the football, I think he handled that extremely well. That was one of those moments where it's like, if you allow yourself to get in your own head, it could start to go downhill. I think he went to the sidelines, he composed himself, and then went back on the field and did what he was supposed to do. We obviously had a targeting call in that game and had um, an ejection there, which sucks, but it, it was targeting. It was exactly what the rule said it was. We understood that. Um, so that was rough. Felt really bad for the player. Um, I can't remember who actually got ejected, but crying Jacobs, on the right? sidelines, like that sucks. Um, I think it was. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I think so. And that sucks. Like you're, you're in your national championship game. Um, Devonte Smith went off in the first half, went off. Um, and just amazing to see, cause you know, everybody had his number. Um, everybody after getting a Heisman, everybody wants to knock you down and show that you're not as great as people think. And yes, he did hurt his fingers in that game. It didn't even get to finish, but still had amazing stats. Najee Harris, incredible, um, ran all over them um, and had one of my favorite quotes uh, in his post-game conf- or, uh, press conference when the guy was like, you know, you just ran all over them. They, you know, they couldn't handle you. And he was like, what? He was like, they, I need to look up the quote. I have it here, but somewhere on my phone, he By the basically way- was like, they were all over my ass. While you're looking that up, Literally I don't know what they said. I don't know what planet my, uh, my brain is on, but I just referenced uh, Brandon Jacobs, who used to play for the Giants. I was like, um, I don't, I don't Jordan know. Battle is who I'm thinking of, uh, who got ejected. Battle, yeah. So for you people who are screaming at me, like, what in the world's wrong with you, Wes? Um, yeah, Jordan Battle ejected. Anyway, sorry, continue. The quote from Najee it, Harris, the guy, the reporter said, um, "How are you able to handle them? The you know the defense so effortless, effortlessly, and." Now she said effortlessly. You didn't see what they was doing. They was blowing my ass up. What are you talking about? <laughs> and so it's just incredible. That's a good quote. Um, yeah, that's um, a good it's a great quote. quote. Sorry if you have kids listening. That's what he said. I'm just as I used to tell my mom, like growing up, I'm just repeating. I'm just repeating <laughs> what they said. Um, but yeah, and then Jalen Waddle got to come in and play a game finally after being out since like September. Um, and of course, I think the the best play of the entire game wasn't even really a play kneeling the ball um Nick Saban allowed Landon Dickerson to come in and be in that formation and 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 kneel the ball for a victory formation so overall um I haven't even talked about Mac Jones oh my gosh uh everybody I think handled everything with class so well they executed like they were supposed to do um they proved that they were the number one team in the nation and truly one of, if not the best team I have ever watched as an Alabama fan. And I've been an Alabama fan my entire life. And this was such an interesting season with so much external pressure outside of just the regular uh, program pressure playing in all SEC schedule. I truly don't think we will ever see a team like this again, because I hope we don't ever see the circumstances again, but this was incredible to watch and I will shut up now. Well, before I go to Matt, Jesse, what do you think about uh, Waddle playing in the game? Jalen Waddle playing in the game. I, I love it. I think, and we've talked about this with people sitting out games and everything. And like I said, I get people wanting to sit out games. I, I truly do. Um, but when you're playing for a national championship, you haven't been able to do what you wanted to do this season because you were hurt. You're finally well enough to come in. I admire him for honestly risking another injury. And he was not to make a pun, but he was like waddling at some points because he wasn't feeling super great. He wasn't that shit. Um, And and he wanted to finish it with his team and for his team. And I love that because he is going to go pretty high in the draft, I would say. 
Mm -hmm. And to see that, I think it was just a really classy, cool move. Cause I don't think you would have seen that um, from other players on other teams or even on our team necessarily. Yeah. Um, I was a little concerned. I saw even in pregame warmups, he appeared to be limping out there and they said he has full range of motion and everything already, but um, man, I was so worried for him. And apparently most everybody on Twitter was too, because they were yeah. like, Nick, please take that man out because he he's, he's limping out there, but uh, he's you limping. Know. You got Jones at one point kind of limping, looking a little wobbly, getting beat up. Um, you're watching out for Najee Harris because he has taken some hits. Right. And then, of course, you've got Devontae Smith with his fingers wrapped up. And we're just like, right. He took a shot on that play, too. I know. Yeah. He took a big shot on that play. But also, <laughs> Ohio State letting, correct me if I'm wrong, they let the player that battles like nailed stay in, and didn't even take him off the field for like watching him, right? Like, you know, I was so caught up in watching uh, battle, I, I didn't even notice if he came I off think, the field or not. I think he got to stay in like I don't think they took him off which is concerning because after that hit he just went like this mm -hmm. and then kind of popped up and I'm like that man doesn't know where he is mm -hmm. he, he knows he's on a football field but I don't think he knows that he plays right um concerning yeah on the uh, on the other side of the ball Matt I have a question for you because uh, you, you know uh, Trey Sermon the running back for Ohio State huge factor uh, in their success this year uh, out after one play in this game. Um, and not only that, but also one thing that I also um, have heard discussed is Ohio State's defensive strategy, how they were basically inviting all of these mismatches across the field with Alabama and basically worked themselves into the, the situation that they found themselves in. So what were your thoughts on the game? Um, did uh, Bama just steamroll them? Did Ohio State give them a lot of opportunities? What do you think? I think that this was a case of a really, 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 really potent offense against a solid defense that just couldn't match up. I, I think you're right. They probably, I don't know the way they schemed, they may have made a couple mistakes here and there, but I, I really think when you look at Bama's offense top to bottom, when you look at the offensive weapons they had, there was no shot here. And that's what I predicted when we talked about the score. I had a feeling that Alabama was going to pull out in front and they were going to stay out front and they were going to win this thing big. Um, and like we said, we know Bama's defense has been sus in a couple of different spots. Notice I said sus and not suspect. I'm getting, I'm getting trendy. Um, Your students teach but, you that? Yes, they did. <laughs> uh, so the thing is, is that I, I, we, I, I don't want to say I knew this was going to happen, but I had a pretty good idea this was going to happen. Um, Ohio State just didn't match up. They didn't have the personnel to match up. Bama was leaps above where they were, so they couldn't hang. Yeah. Point, point blank, a period. But, Wes, before we move on, let me ask you this question. I seem to remember there were some people in our YouTube uh, comments. Were those Ohio State fans? Oh, there was tons of Ohio State fans saying mm, – uh, Interesting. Yeah. I only asked because um, <laughs> if any of those Ohio State fans are listening right now, I, I – I got, I got this for you. It's some ointment because your defense just got nuked. Freaking burn, dude. Out of here. Yeah. Big 10 defenses are garbage. It was, it was bad. And, and, you know, I don't know if it was because Sermon it was, was out or whatever, but um, it just felt like Fields was uh, trying to do everything out there. Um, it was, I don't know if flustered is the word. It was just like he had to do too much. I mean, it looked like he was getting knocked around and it just. With that one hit he got, and he like, I feel like he just landed straight on his hip and he like couldn't get up for a second. Yeah. It might've been in like the third quarter. It looked rough. Yeah. He did seem like he had a lot of like nervous energy trying to kind of, and like you said, trying to do everything by himself. Which, yeah. if you lose your starting tailback, that kind of happens. But mm -hmm. you know, well, he missed like a it's, few open it's throws. Be the same thing that happened in 2009 when we played against Texas, and like first quarter, first couple plays, like we, we knock out uh, Colt McCoy, and he's mm -hmm. out for the rest of the game, and his career has not looked great since then. Well, um, his father told him not to play the rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, he was unwell. But um, it's the same thing. Like afterwards, all the Texas fans were like, well, Colt McCoy was out. And I'm like, yeah, we knocked him out. Like, I don't want anybody to get hurt, but we did that. Um, yeah. Not saying that's like an accolade, but it's part of the game. It's what happens when you go up against a really strong team, defense, whatever. 
And so I feel like, and I don't know this because no Ohio State fans have talked to me today, uh, which is fine. <laughs> but see how that's a bad thing. I know. On a great day. Have you um, have you invited conversation but, or um, no, okay? No, but I do know I am friends with Ohio State fans. Obviously. Right, right, right. Oh, After yeah. living, I don't in think Chicago. I've ever seen one in the wild. Very interesting. Um, yeah. You don't want to spook them, but <laughs> they. Uh, I feel like they're going to be like, well, Sermon was out and Fields wasn't a hundred, and it's just like, imagine if they would have played all of their games instead of seven or six or whatever right. imagine the attrition you would have then on your players you guys were a lot fresher and you know what just saying Didn't yeah that stuff may have happened happen. a long time ago and then they don't even find themselves in the playoff um so yep. yeah um and also as uh you know people have been screaming about uh, justin fields leaving georgia and everything I'm not gonna i'm not saying uh that I'm very angry about what happened last night either <laughs> from that standpoint too. Cause I'm like, look, I've heard it all. Mm. Okay. If we would have just had Justin Fields, we could have done this. I'm like, no dude, just. just they on. actually put a, um, I can't remember if it was ESPN or SEC who it was one of their um, Instagrams and Twitters, but they did a side by side of Justin Fields and Jake from and their mm -hmm. stats playing Bama and what it looked like. Mm -hmm. they're very similar yeah <laughs> like it's extraordinarily similar um jake's actually might have been better to be honest i was gonna honest. say i don't recall jake struggling against bama much at all as a matter of fact no. i think some of his best games were against bama it seems like yeah so. i think he completed more touchdown passes and all like so fear not georgia nation <laughs> it wouldn't have been any different yeah. i don't think I don't, you know I, like I agree. Now it might have been. You don't know that. It might they have been had a quarterback. They won as a championship and it beat dogs all the time. <laughs> it might have been different for Bama though, because I don't know if anyone recalls this, but originally Jake Fromm had committed to Bama verbally. Yes, he but did. But he committed to yes, Bama. I was still um, a student there at the time, and uh, then he flipped that year. And I'm pretty sure because he flipped, we were able to get Mac Jones. Right. Yeah, I'm what, okay what, with it. That's what people were saying. I'm, Oof. I'm happy with that. I like that situation better. No offense to Jake Fromm, but I would rather have Mac Jones. It was a, a lot of uh, musical chairs there uh, that got him there. So yeah, strange how things yeah, work Kirby out. Kirby flipped, Jake flipped. You know. Yep. The whole thing, and I will say, I am okay with Steve Sarkeesian because what happened last time didn't happen this time. And I feel like we're back to a good place. I'm still sad he's leaving because yeah. I just get annoyed with that. But we're at a good place. But as far as the last I love championship. love how in Bama world it's, it, sorry, Wes. I mean, it's just, I love how in Bama world it's, we're in a good place. We just won a national championship. We're in a good place. Are you kidding right. me? Yeah, I love how Come on. I, I've seen Bama fans talk about, well, place. It was just our turn this year. I'm thinking it's your turn every year. <laughs> no, it's like every three years. We oh, haven't gone stop more than. It. If you're, you're talking to the guy haven't... that hasn't won a championship since 1980, and the guy that hasn't won a championship <laughs> since 1998, don't was, give me that. I wasn't was born yet. Years. The last time my team won. Okay, so. <laughs> oh my god! Since Nick Saban has arrived in Tuscaloosa, it has not been more than three years. Um, since he's like one and natty each time yeah which just Ooh, goes hey, west which just Wes, confirms Wes. that he sold his soul to the devil what no <laughs> watch, watch watch this watch this west you ready watch this okay hey, jesse he's retiring no he's not stop he's, retiring. he's got like five he's years retire, left in him i swear i swear whatever that he's gonna retire no, he's not I feel he's like retiring next what week. would he do he's got a press conference on monday <gasps> no i feel I feel like we got that like a in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I feel like we have like a Pavlov's thing going on here where Matt goes, he's retiring, just to hear Jesse go, he's not, he's not. So uh, yeah. yeah. It's it's fun if to If you want to talk about something, up. you talk about me. I'm a <laughs> I'm a man. I'm, I'm 40. 40. <laughs> I'm 27. I'm a man. I'm, I'm 40. 40. <laughs> yeah. There it is. So Okay. Good Lord. <laughs> All right. Nick. I have the feeling, well, since we have nothing but Bama to talk about this episode anyway, this is, we're going to circle back to, uh, to more stuff. But uh, for now.
the uh, current my favorite em, episode ever. Current pick'em standings: Matt with the lead and win with uh, 31 points. Jesse 27, me yeah, Wes 26. Yeah, so, buddy. congratulations to Matt. Woo! And I will be uh, I will be sending that money to you in pennies. So, um, <laughs> oh, I better back up the Brinks truck. Huh? <laughs> hey, right. I'll be just like Nick Saban. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I, Kirby Smart. You know what? I'm gonna <laughs> actually apparently Jeremy Pruitt from the way things are going. <laughs> oh gosh, uh, he got caught. Anyway, I'm actually gonna skip what I had for the. Uh, well, I, I'm not gonna make it part of the news segment. I just want to get you guys' thoughts because it's really not. I mean, it is news, but whatever. So, so the national championship <clears throat> game delivers the lowest rating since 2004, and that was USC Oklahoma. And I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on that too. Like, what do you? Wh why do you think that happened, Matt? I'll start with you first, and what your opinion is on on that. Well, I think it. I would imagine it probably has something to do with the fact that people thought Bama was going to roll away with it. Which, yeah, which they did. Um, I think that we've seen both. Well, we've definitely seen Bama over and over and over and over again in the CFP final. Um, I think maybe that's probably a little bit of fatigue from other parts of the country i'm sure that it was the top rated thing in alabama probably the top rated thing in the rest of the south as well but i i would imagine it's probably a little bit of that and the fact that i think most people were like eh, they're they're gonna blow this thing out of the water which is what they did so right well it's definitely the most watched thing on monday night but um in you know measuring up to other national championships um jesse what do you think yeah i mean i would have to agree i think i mean i'm very and people tell me all the time how much I was going to say like, you're not going to say why people aren't watching your team you're just kind of like all the know. time it's, that's all I hear is like I'm not going to watch that like Bama's going to run away with it or I'm tired of seeing Bama in it um and I think I think Ohio State's really similar too you look at the Big Ten nobody's like yeah I'm a Northwestern fan or I'm an Iowa fan but I'm okay with Ohio State everybody right. these are very polarizing programs mm -hmm. people true. either love them yeah or they hate them. And right. so if you're not in the love category, which is a few people, you're in the hate category, you don't want to watch it. It's a late game on the East Coast, an eight o'clock game. Um, so you're going to lose viewers. I'm pretty sure um, if I was looking at my group, like Snapchat, I think The Bachelor was on last night. So that <laughs> might have taken people away. <laughs> um, I, I think that's still on. I don't know, Oh man. but I, I think it's a mixture of, of that. And then also I think, you know, like we've said all season, this season has an asterisk next to it. People, I don't feel like got as much into football this season as they do in previous seasons. Cause you couldn't go out with your friends. You couldn't be at a bar. You couldn't That's be true. doing stuff. So I don't, I don't feel like everyone was as invested. True. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't honestly know what to attribute it to other than just, you know, like we said, fatigue, um, seeing Bama. And not like I said, not just Bama, <clears throat> but truthfully, you know, we see Ohio State in the playoff a lot. Um, and so it's just kind of like, you know, one of those deals where I think everybody's just like, hey, we've seen these teams so much, so, you know, and, and like you said, it's not a, a huge investment uh, this year or not as big of an investment as, as it yeah. is in, in normal years. So, um I don't know. I mean, like I said, we watched it. It wasn't any different in my house, it. but, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, interesting, interesting stat there. So um, let's, uh, do you guys want to talk about the opinion segment? Let's do it. That was a rhetorical question. I know, but um, yeah. So if I may venture an opinion, I'm not really interested in your opinion. Three, three, all. Yeah. Well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. All right. So, some people are saying Love that, quote. that this year's Bama team is the best to ever play college football, which is crazy when you consider that we said the exact same thing about LSU oh. last year and thought that we would never see anything like it. So mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, Jesse, I know what your opinion is, but well, I think I know. I'm, I don't want to speak. Maybe you don't. I don't know. But um so like Mac Jones was indicating that as well, uh, saying that, you know, we played an all-SEC schedule. Uh, you, you'll never see anything like this again with the all-SEC schedule. Ho hopefully we don't see that again. Um, and uh, – Please, I God, like no. Yeah. 
And then, you know, uh, and then some other, you know, Bama players are obviously agreeing with that. Now, Joe Burrow had this to say, uh, I think he said, I think everyone knows the answer to that question. I don't even have to say it. So obviously it looks like Joe Burrow disagrees as well. He should, but, uh, but Matt, I want to start with you first on, on, that. on this one, but uh, do you think in your opinion that it is the, this is the best team to ever play college football this year's Bama team? Uh- Listen, I've been listening to that since last night. Um, I'm, and I don't understand the mentality where you can come from because when you can't, you got to be more precise about. And granted, it's legalistic to have this viewpoint, but you can't say the best team ever. Top, like you got to quantify that somehow. You got to be like, well, what do you mean? You mean offensively, like offensive production? Sure. Uh, points scored per game? Sure. You look at the average overall? Sure. You can look at all that different stuff. But you also have to remember that the game now is completely different than the game was even 10 years ago. It's a completely different thing. It's, and I, it's cliche to say this, it's apples to oranges. You can't match them up. Um, it's just, I never really cared much for that. This Bama team was really, really good. They were the best team this year, as we saw. Um, but I don't think you can make the claim they're the best ever, simply because you can't, you can, there's no way to, to test that. There's no way to kind of, evaluate how they are the best team ever per se yeah i know I, I i agree with that and you know it's just like you said it's hard to say the game is geared so much towards offense now um that it's really hard uh to say the defense for bama this year also as you said was sus and uh <laughs> so uh i mean if, if i were to nitpick and it is nitpicking really if you uh, want to get down to it as far as the defense because you know obviously the team was so good overall but that was an area that had struggled now that said they did shore things up along the way and got better as the season went along it seems defensively Justin, uh, very well. yeah so um i don't know um i don't know that you could say like you said uh, quantifiably that they're the best team uh but you know you'd, you'd have to put them up there especially considering um everything that everyone went through this year because uh, you had not just the the games, but you had the added mental and emotional aspect of, you know, COVID and and everything else going on. So Jesse, I want to give you the last word on this one. Yeah. I mean, I'm like going back and forth on my second screen, looking at um, the Tigers team stats from last year and Mm -hmm. Alabama's team stats from this year and comparing, and they are eerily similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, like there's, you know, point one of a difference here one point difference here they're super super similar um I think the only the biggest difference is uh points for for LSU is 726 whereas for Bama it's 630 um but their points against for Bama 252 um points against for LSU 328 those are the biggest differences but when you look at you know everything else is super super similar I will say Alabama and everybody's situation this year was so different than any other year ever. Um, We got what we always wanted. We always wanted to say, well, you know, we play all these other teams from different conferences and it's hard to, to look and see who's the best because we just need to play an all SEC schedule because we're the best, we're the toughest, blah, blah, blah. We'll knock each other out. We'll figure it out. Um, And we got that. Now it may not have turned out the way, other teams in the conference wanted it to turn out but I think we got a pretty good look at who the best in every conference was and then who beat the best out of those conferences um so to me that's really telling again I don't want to take away anything from the the LSU team of last year and of course Mac Jones is is a stud at quarterback but I think overall we saw on Bama's side, and I know it's going to sound biased because I'm saying it, but overall, you know, we weren't just relying on one person to get it done. I felt like a lot of times it was like all on Joe Burrow to get it done. And I feel like overall we had a more complete team. Um, Maybe not necessarily with the defense, but I still feel like uh, LSU allowed a lot of points scored against them. At least they did in the Alabama game. Whereas we didn't really let people score that many points against us outside of Ole Miss, oddly enough. Um, Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. Oh, no I, offense. That was going to happen. I know. I just, I don't know. I think, like I said earlier, I think this Alabama team is, is truly a special team. And, and I would love to see them play last year's um, Tigers. I know we technically did, but I'm saying this year's team with that development. That right. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about not doing it all by, by himself. Uh, I was thinking about Najee and uh, it, it looks like he's projected to go uh, mid to lower round in the, in the uh, first round. Uh, and that's about the slot where the Steelers are. So I'm really hoping for, for that. That'd be it. That'd be a good, uh, a good addition, I think for the be offense. Great. So. great. I pray to the Lord above that somehow I don't want Mac Jones to fall like in the draft. I just nah, really want the Patriots <laughs> to nah. get Mac Jones. And I don't even know if he would do well in the Patriots system, um, right. but hopefully he's already used to a coach like Bill Belichick because Bill and Nick are besties. The so. same because they're the same person. They were in oh! the same room together. Didn't you see the uh, documentary? Listen, hey, hey, listen. Phones. You can do anything with the magic of TV, okay? <laughs> I don't believe for a second those are two separate guys. This is the same bloody guy. <laughs> Nick at least wears polos. Bill does. I was gonna say, doesn't. Very different fashion styles, both of them. So uh, very different, <laughs> also like marriage style. <laughs> yeah. Like Miss Terry and Nick, five ever, and then like Bill's been divorced and like has a younger girl. <laughs> you know <laughs> different <laughs> all right well i mean that's uh I, I i really enjoy that uh that conversation though because i mean it's worth it it's worth having the discussion because uh they yeah. were a good they were a good team and the stats are there like you said eerily similar so um yeah. let's uh we had a few listener feedback uh comments uh, so let's uh talk about those you want answers i want the truth you can't handle the truth. All right. Well, some of these are just kind of funny. Uh, and I, we were asking about national championship thoughts, if anyone had those. And uh, J.R. Robinson says, don't like both. So <laughs> he was not Fair. shy. <laughs> like I and, said, polarizing yep. program. I get it. That right there, kids, is a mood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really, it really is. Because um, it was funny. It, really it was, it was. So That's how I felt in 2013 when Auburn played FSU. I was like, hate both. Hope they both both lose. Well, you know, here's the thing: is because I, I was pulling for Bama. Obviously, um, I was pulling for them throughout the game, and then obviously in the second half, we knew what was going to happen. Um, but it was weird. Like when they won and the game was over, I found myself like I was mad. <laughs> and it was like, why? I'm pulling for them. But at the same time, I was like, but here we go again. It's the same thing over and over again. I feel like I'm stuck in a loop here. So um, it was weird. It was a really odd feeling. Like I was happy because that's what I wanted to happen. But at the same time, I'm like, well, here we go again. So it's like, remember, it's more money for the conference. More money yeah. for the conference. And that's the thing is like I'm I'm obviously uh, you know, I, I wanted that to happen, but it's just funny. Um, and then the uh, second comment we had here, Ed Strawmeyer says, um, I think regardless of whether OSU was one of the top four teams in the nation or not, they never deserved to be in the CFP. Justice is what we watched happen last night. Good versus evil. <laughs> here we go again making it a morali oh, like, morality tale here so <laughs> can, can we um can we kind of go a different way for a second um what? the last night when i was watching or this afternoon i was watching a recap and um hold on i want to make sure i got the name right hold that thought ryan day okay i was right so they said they, they had a picture of nick saban and ryan day and they said two legendary coaches nope um what i mean i had to look up ryan day's name today oh right i just had to twice did ryan didn't ryan day like only take over for urban like three years ago like it hasn't been hasn't long been yeah and and he basically yeah. Ur urban basically took the full program and just handed him the reins is basically what happened right. there's really not a lot of turnover um to my knowledge yeah. uh, and and there's a lot of a lot of talent that was left there so um not saying that he's not a good coach because he's obviously won games and he's, oh, no. he's, he's done well uh, in the years that he has been there, but I, legendary, that's definitely yeah. not the, not the company that he belongs in right now. 
So yeah, that that, it, that that call didn't make sense to me, and I was like, "What? Are, what are we talking about?" Also, here? Like, all of his comments before sense. the game about like, I I can't use all the expletives he used, but I know locker room speeches are not supposed to get released, but they did. But even his um his demeanor and his arrogance in press conferences leading up to the game, I'm like, coaches. Be careful doing that. Again, we talk about it. You're the leader of the team. You set the precedent. But when you are that arrogant, sometimes it does not translate well. Um, Your players get arrogant, and sometimes they don't necessarily execute like they're supposed to. And it's just not a good look. Like, you're going up against a great program. I've never, and I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, send me the clip, send me the article, but I've never once seen Nick Saban disparage a program and like be that arrogant before a game. So I just, I don't like the way. But after the game. (laughs) Now after the game, it's like not arrogance anymore, but um, I just, I don't know. I don't like when they do that. I think it's just, it's not, it's not classy for a leader to just be like, well, we're going to stomp them. We're better. I wonder uh, if Nick, as he gets older, if he's going to ever develop like a Steve Spurrier kind of quip mentality. You know how Steve Steve wasn't necessarily just outright, these people are terrible, I hate them. But he had the, he, you know, those those quips that he would just come up with off the cuff that would just totally, you know, uh, made the other team look bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, it's also so just, many, I think, a, so many against Tennessee. a new so many. look of coaches. You have the younger coaches. Ryan Day is a little sassy. Uh, Dan Mullen, clearly sassy, putting it yeah. lightly. Even Dabo Sweeney before games and everything, or like after the CFP came out, kind of sassy. You have yeah. to, I say younger coaches, like they're significantly older than I am, but like they're younger than Nick Saban. They're not yeah. the old school coaches. They just have a different way of dealing with the press, I think, than um, than someone like a Nick Saban or I'm trying to think of another you know older style coach that's not like an nfl coach yeah but well Saban definitely has a unique way of dealing with the press i'll give him that so <laughs> uh depending he just on hates who's them. asking the question he doesn't disparage teams he disparages right. the press no I yeah that in those rooms so quit asking <laughs> right hey if you noticed last night they didn't have maria taylor talking to him she she interviewed ryan day so i know he did apologize to Maria, I know. though he did as, as a matter of fact it may have it, it may have made more sense to to have her interview him because they have that connection now of uh Look, yeah. I, I know, I know, I overreacted. I'm sorry. So you know, whatever. Miss Terry made him run on the treadmill for that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. By the um, way, fun fact: I just, yeah. I just looked this up because I was curious. Nick Saban's first year coaching was in 1973. Mm-hmm. He's been at this for a minute. Yeah, just a, a really just long a little bit. Minute. That's Sheesh. how you get legendary, man. That's right. Um, All right, let's go to our next segment, and that is our Just for Fun segment. And so on this segment, we're going with uh, superlative slash uh, awards since it's the end of the season and everything's done, over and done with. uh, What are your superlatives or awards for each of these teams? We're going to start with Jesse and Arkansas. What is your uh, award or superlative for them? So I'm going to give Arkansas the Chris Jenner award and it is known as the you're doing great sweetie award. Okay. Um, that's like what that. Arkansas, yes, they're, they're doing great. <laughs> you're going to get there. Um, so they, yeah, they're getting the Chris Jenner award. Okay. Um, Auburn. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I write these down because if you're watching we have like a doc where we can see each other writing I write them here um Auburn is getting the award for those that don't play so good but want to do other stuff good too (laughs) that's what they're they're getting oh I love it I love it it's exactly what I I would expect you to pick for them honestly Mm -hmm. I I would I would have given them the amateur hour award if I was doing Auburn but you the the Derek Zoolander award yeah for those that don't play so good but want to do other stuff good too that's right all right uh (laughs) Florida what is theirs this is uh your coach is a douche award that's (laughs) wow just uh. 
I tried <laughs> to come up with something nice and I couldn't. So it was we either the George every... Award or like your coach. We agreed. just lost every Florida fan <laughs> on the podcast. They just said, I nope. just lost <laughs> all my Florida friends. <laughs> <laughs> all my florida yeah. friends hate to see what that trophy looks like, like by the way but um, um yeah no <laughs> um all right and uh kentucky do they even go here award <laughs> uh, i tried really because you guys know i think kentucky's sweet but like i tried to come up with something but i there wasn't anything this season that i was like that's so kentucky <laughs> right i couldn't think of anything i was like yeah really no there was nothing like whoa or nothing like ooh. right all right so uh without making us vomit what is your pick for bama the goat <laughs> award hey i mean statistically i can't argue with you so there you go you really, you really can't. all time you really can't which uh, we haven't mentioned, or you may have mentioned it before. Yeah, I think you did mention the number seven, but that passed. Uh, he surpassed uh, Bear Bryant for the uh, for the. He most. did. He did. He surpassed Bear. Um, so. Tied him for the amount at Bama, but surpassed him as far as number of national champions. number total. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because he has one at LSU. I know right. we don't like to talk about it either. It's fine. That's the one that we don't talk about. We just, just yeah. that didn't happen. Um, all right, Matt, LSU. What do you what do you got for them? All right. So so for LSU, I gave them the oh no, baby, what is you doing award. <laughs> um because I mean, let's be honest, you couldn't have had a worse start than they had and yeah. just trouble all year. And for a defending national champion, I can't remember the last time we saw a defending national champion look that and I hate to use the term ragged, but let's be honest. So we're gonna say was. ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> I was not going to go there. I wasn't going to go there. So yeah, LSU kind of looked. I mean, he's over here saying <laughs> sus and stuff already. So I know. I, mean, I figured yeah. that was that was yeah. what's coming. Yeah. Alabama's going to get the bougie as heck award. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, LSU got school, the. So there ain't nothing bougie about that school. <laughs> so you're not wrong. You know, I've driven through it. And they all have COVID right now. I'm sure because if you didn't see the streets. Oh, I did. Well, I didn't see it. I heard about it. I'm sure. Um, not a mask in sight. So I hope they give all the students the next two weeks off to quarantine because it may be necessary. <laughs> not going to say I wouldn't have done the same thing. I did the same thing when I. I was in school. There just wasn't a pandemic happening, say, wasn't so COVID I can't then. judge too harshly. Although uh, all that uh, all that whiskey kills the COVID, right? So um, exactly, I guess it, so. Yeah. Morgan Wallen yeah. didn't get COVID after he was there, so it must. Um, all right, moving on to Mississippi State. What do you got, Mississippi State? We are giving them the "Please don't pay attention to my comments after a fight" award. <laughs> Um, because I really think that that whole situation overshadowed that game for Mississippi State. And Mississippi State did not have a great season. Mike Leach's first season in the SEC was a little rough, and I feel like that's kind of the whole smash this year with that Mississippi State was that that brawl at the end with was it Tulsa was it was it who yeah. they were fighting with? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. it's just it's just not a the optics on that are awful to use a PR term. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's one of those deals where uh, you have a pretty terrible season, you get a bowl game, but then you you mess that up with a brawl at the end. So it's kind of like, uh, yep. all right, uh, Mizzou, what do you got for all right. Mizzou? For Mizzou, um, I really had to stretch the old brain a little bit for this. So I, I'm giving Mizzou the Dewey Decimal Juice, Juice Box Memorial Award because Coach Drinky <laughs> turned Missouri into a decent team and they went five and five. So they get their they get their juice boxes. They get to get back on the cliche machine, and uh, we'll see how they how things go for Missouri next. Toughness season. Tuesday, Matt. <laughs> Toughness Tuesday. Stop it! Stop it, Coach Drinky. Ugh. Matt, um, I feel like I'm going to have to get you like a tumbler with <laughs> Eli Drinkwood's face on it that says "Come drink." Please don't. I will throw that. I will take that to the goodwill the day after you give it to me. Uh, I do not want that. But I don't want that voodoo. I don't want to see that guy. If you're a Missouri fan watching this, I'm sorry, but uh, no, thank you. You know what? I can't wait for more cliches next year. I mean, that that clip that I put together is going to be like five minutes long before it's all said and done. All right. Uh, oh, oh, Miss Matt, what do you got? 
Ooh, Ole Miss. I uh, uh, listen. Ole Miss came out the gate. They looked pretty good. Uh, I don't remember what their exact record was, but they definitely showed some improvement under Lane Kiffin, especially offensively. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, knowing the things that I know about the SEC uh, and how things sometimes turn out, looking at you, Tennessee, um, I'm going to give Ole Miss the highest potential to being uh, being put under double secret probation award um, because. You know, Lane, Joey Freshwater is kind of sketchy. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yep. Okay. All right. And then finally, Tennessee. Uh, for Tennessee, I'm doing the What's That Award. What uh, are because those? That's what, yeah, that's what Coach uh, Pruitt said when he saw asparagus for the first time in his life. Um, and let's be honest, Tennessee season was definitely a what is that? Because <laughs> that's every – I mean, you look at the season top to bottom, it was a constant case of what is going on, what's happening. I don't understand anything about Tennessee football. And even now we're in limbo with things because apparently uh, there's some recruiting violations that have come to light and Coach Pruitt's seat's apparently the surface of the sun. So <laughs> things are great on Rocky Top once again. Yeah, I did hear Feinbaum said in his show the other day that it's increasingly uh, it looking unlikely like he'll be there next year, which... Yeah, I know. I saw that. Um, when Paul yeah. says it, yeah, when Paul's talking about it. Then <laughs> we're all in trouble. And to, and to be completely honest with you, even if they do end up getting rid of Jeremy Pruitt, if they go hire Hugh Freeze, I'm just like, Ugh. well, that's the thing. If you get rid of Pruitt, you have to have a huge name. You can't just get rid of him. I don't, I don't think. I take. Well, what coach wants to go there after all the coaching? Hoopla. And that's a, that's another thing too. Yeah. I'm, I, I have a candidate in mind if things go that route. He's currently the head coach at a little school in Arkansas. You've probably heard of him. Um, Bush Jones? Arkansas State. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> going gonna, gonna to say that Tennessee needs to reach out and bring Butch home. I really think it's time for Butch to come back. He went I can't, through the Nick Saban uh, rehab. I can't believe you, yeah, you even yeah, said he's that. He's been fixed. He has been fixed. I know, I but just knowing back. the way that usually if you're like, you know, in the middle of taking a drink and I mentioned Butch Jones's name, you you almost choke to death. So right. just the fact because that you said that. I'm in the middle that, of saying an expletive. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, no, by the listen, way. I'm, I, I, I'm just, just going to throw that out there. I think Butch Jones is, is – um, a horrible human being and needs to not be anywhere near anything in the SEC ever again. And I hope he, he just won a national championship. I was kidding. I was kidding. I was kidding. No, he didn't win a national championship. He's an analyst. He had nothing to do with it. In turn. Smoke his Alabama cigar. Ah. <laughs> by, by the way, um, uh, they were talking about him on, on Twitter, like a ton last night, where is there any other oh, assistant boy. coach in the game who manages to find the main camera? you know, like Butch does. He right? always finds the camera somehow. Like, uh, how? <laughs> uh, no. But, uh, yeah. I feel like we see him more than Nick Saban. On, it's crazy. On the it's, it's like he always positions himself around it's, something big I happening. Will, I, will, <laughs> I will tell you why he always ends up on TV, because somebody at ESPN, I don't know if there's a higher up somewhere, but that son of a gun hates Tennessee. <laughs> And so every opportunity they get, they're going to find a little way just to stab that needle in just a little bit further. And it's every single season. Yeah. But Jones it's is like whatever kid. I don't know if it was uh, Trevor Lawrence's little sister or who it was that was sitting behind him at the Heisman who was just like, <laughs> you know, like just trying to get on camera the whole time. That's hilarious. Awful. Just awful. Um, all right. So uh, South Carolina. Uh, I gave them the nicest personality superlative. Um, and I don't know if anybody at South Carolina has a nice personality or not, but you know how in high school you have like the person who doesn't really have anything else going for them um, academically, athletically, anything else. And so they just get the nice personality award, you know, they're, they're nice. And they're the ones who they hand their yearbook to a girl and she writes, stay sweet, have a good summer. And that's, that's that type of person. So, um, we'll see. We'll see uh, what happens in in uh, in this year, uh, the first year of Beamer. Uh, but for now, they got the nicest personality. So, <laughs> Beamer ball back in Carolina. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> that's it. Um, a and M, Texas A and M, uh, most likely to have quarterback behavioral issues. <laughs> um, <laughs> not killing Mont. Now, to get to that's, his credit, he good. behaved good. himself. Good. But uh, we all yeah. know. 
we all know how quarterbacks go with uh, with Jimbo. Um, secure, the jail. Your, secure your crab legs at uh, Publix. So um, um, they they go to jail. Yeah, it's true. Right to jail. <laughs> uh, Vanderbilt. You you go right to jail. Vanderbilt gets the it's most. It's a TikTok. Come on. I, I got. I, like TikTok. I got it. I don't know. I was just going with it. I haven't seen that particular one, but um, I do get sent TikToks regularly, though. So, um, you too, by my parents. Yeah. Oh wow. There you go. Well, that's 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 odd. Okay. I know. This my parents and my sister have TikToks, and I get sent TikToks, and I don't have it. I know your sister. I can see that, but yeah, your parents. That's that'd be like my mom sending me a TikTok, and I'd be like. First off, how did you find this? Second <laughs> off, how did you figure yeah. out how to send it to me? And hi, mom. Exactly. And third off, I just like, what? that's so random. I look at my dad and he's like over there on his phone. I'm like, are you TikToking? Are you, <laughs> are you, you on doing? the, are you on the TikToker? Are you on the TikTok? And he's just like over there watching like French Bulldog videos. I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's, Wes, you, when you did that, it sounded like George Bush. Can you imagine I've, George Bush on, on TikTok? I want, if George Bush I don't know what has this a is. TikTok, I will get a he, TikTok just to watch He it. walks, he walks over to Lori. He's like, hey, honey, look, I got the TikToker. Look at this. Yeah, I'm a decider. <laughs> I posted one. I'm a, I'm an influencer, uh, honey. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch. Oh my God. As soon as we get off of this, I'm going to look up if George W. Bush has a TikTok. Uh, he's he's on Instagram. TikTok. He's on he Instagram, is he? so yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. well, give him he a is right. We don't know who runs his Instagram. His his people post it, so um, and I think most he's of it Instagram. is like paintings that he does and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, all right, Please. Vanderbilt gets the most likely to succeed, which should come as no surprise because you have to go to Vanderbilt in their careers. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, well, well, well. I mean, in life, because you know, you know, there's more to champions. life than football. So we're champions of life. Yeah. <laughs> right hey so. <laughs> stop that we do not use that terminology anymore no we don't use that we don't use brick by brick we don't what's the other stupid thing he said that's what drinky is he's oh he's butch version 2.0 mm. well um Get it together matt get it together i haven't heard if You're one doing of them great. had an injury by falling on a helmet or not but um <laughs> that's no oh, no we had that happen too. i know that's uh, that's what i'm referencing um, all right. Finally, we have Georgia, and obviously they're the biggest flirt because every year, Ouch. every year, <laughs> it looks so promising, and they flirt with uh, success, but um, they're actually Molly Hatchet and flirting with disaster. So, um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you for that. That was great, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I don't get it. Like, but uh, it's because you're ten. <laughs> You know, in fairness, flirting with disaster. Come yeah. on, Jesse. I was born and in '93. Austin, I don't know what to tell Austin, you. Yeah. Well, I was born in '84. I'm right to hit. I'm like right behind you. Truthfully, the main reason I know that song is because of rock band. So, as I could say about a lot oh. of songs. So, oh. and you know, and if you sing it, you have to do it in that voice. And so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Don't like right. that. Well, that, that does it for our Just for Fun segment um, and uh, in this episode, our National Championship edition of Pigs, Hands, and Pageantry. Uh, we should have uh, another episode where we'll summarize each team's uh, recruiting class for this year. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that. should be in the next uh, few weeks um, or whenever the date is for the, uh, the final, the final uh, class there. So uh, we will keep you posted on that on the social medias. Um, and... Uh, Speaking of which, uh, if you guys would like to contact us, we are uh, available for email at pigskinsandpageantry at gmail.com. And Jesse's got the shaker out, ready to celebrate some more. And uh, you can all also hit us up on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash pigskinsandpageantry. We are on Twitter at PPSCC Podcast. And we are also on Instagram at pigskinsandpageantry. Don't forget we are available for download on iTunes, Stitcher, Tune in radio and most podcasting apps for iPhone, Android, and other operating systems. And obviously on YouTube. We appreciate it if you guys would tune in there. Uh, subscribe and uh, give us a five-star review. Uh, we would love that and uh, greatly appreciate that. So, hey, it's been a uh, crazy season. Hey, we, we made it, guys. Before, Woo! we didn't even know if the season was even going to happen. And here we are doing the national championship uh, episode. So, 
Uh, until next time, this is Wes. Go dogs. Always and forever, the greatest of all time. Roll Tide. Oh, boy. Can't stomach it, guys. Hey, guess what? It's officially soccer season. <laughs> Hail United. <laughs> <laughs>